So we know life begins when an egg in our mother meets a sperm from our father. We know that sperm donates its DNA, and now we form a zygote. Now this zygote, this one cell, is going to divide into all of the cells that make up our body. So first, that one zygote cell is going to divide, then each of those cells divide, then each of those cells divide, and etc. And we're going to keep on dividing cells, eventually forming something called a morula. So this morula is just the name of this original early stage structures when the cells first start dividing. But eventually the cells are going to keep on dividing and go through a process referred to as blastulation, where we form a blastula. And this blastula is made out of two parts, this yellow outer part and this blue inner part. So this yellow outer part, these cells, these particular cells, are going to divide to eventually become the placenta and other extra embryonic structures. However, this blue part, these cells, which is referred to as the inner cell mass, these blue cells are a little more interesting. They're eventually going to go through a process referred to as glass gastrulation so these cells this inner cell mass these groups of cells go through gastru gastrulation eventually forming a gastrula so again this these cells eventually become become these cells form this gastrula and this gastrula is made out of these three germ layers we have an ectodermal germ layer a mesodermal germ layer and an endodermal dermal germ layer so all of these cells are going to eventually divide to eventually become every single cell in the human body so it's these blue cells, which again go through gas, glass, gastrulation, forming this gastrula, which become every cell in our body. So this is essentially is what turns into, becomes an embryo in a human body. And again, so we have these three germ layers. We have the endoderm germ layer. And so it's these cells in this endoderm, these cells in this endoderm, which are again going to keep on dividing. They're going to differentiate and they're eventually going to differentiate into these cell types. For example, these cells are going to keep on dividing to form lung cells and thyroid cells and pancreatic cells. However, this mesodermal germ layer, germ line, these cells are going to keep on dividing to eventually form cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle and kidney cells. And also these, these mesodermal cells are going to keep on dividing to form all the blood cells, like red blood cells and smooth muscle. And then we also have the ectodermal germ layer. So these cells are going to divide to form skin cells and neurons and pigment cells. But again, the point is we go from a zygote. We keep on dividing, and eventually we form this blastula where these outer cells aren't very interesting. They just turn into the placenta, but these, this inner cell mass, they keep dividing to form the gastrula, which eventually becomes a human body. But something interesting to note is let's just focus on this one particular echo, ectodermal cell. We know this particular ectodermal cell is going to keep on dividing. It's going to keep on dividing, and we know these, this ectodermal germline becomes these cells. So this cell will keep on dividing and eventually form skin cells, neuron cells, and pigment cells. But you might, we realize a skin cell is vastly different from a neuron, which is vastly different from a pigment cell. But why? Because we know they all have the exact same genome. In fact, Every single cell in our body has the exact same genome. Remember, we came from the genes we came from our mom and the genes we got from our dad. So, so this zygote with these genes we got from our parents kept dividing. And these cells kept dividing. And again, these cells kept dividing. And again, creating all the cells in our body, which all have the exact same genome. And this isn't true for gametes and certain lymphocytes. So, so, but nearly 99% of the cells in our body all have the exact same genome. However... If they all have the exact same genome, why do we have such drastically different cells? We know skin cell is very different from a neuron. What's going on? Well, to determine this, we need to look closer in the nucleus. So let's look in the nucleus of the skin cell. So yeah, we have the entire genome, but we see these are the only genes that are activated. These are the genes that are activated, creating their, these particular proteins, which eventually creates a skin cell. However, this neuron genome, these are the only genes that are activated. So these are the genes that are activated, creating these particular proteins, which eventually create a neuron and et cetera. And then this pigment, these are the genes that are activated. So yeah, even though every single cell has the exact same genome, which genes are activated determines what kind of cell type you have. So, but why, why does the skin activate the, and express these genes while the neuron only activates these genes? What's going on? Well, 
Essentially, it has to do with transcription factors. So in this skin cell, this blue transcription factor is active and activated, so therefore it's transcribing and activating this gene and therefore creating this protein. And this orange transcription factor is activated, so therefore it's turning on this gene, creating this particular protein. And it, so again, it's the, trans, the transcription factors that are activated which determine which genes are expressed, which determines which proteins are expressed, which determine what cell type you have. So in the neuron, these are the transcription factors that are activated, so therefore these are the genes that are expressed, creating their proteins, creating a neuron. But it's a little more complex than that. For example, maybe in this pigment cell, maybe in this pigment cell, this hot pink transcription factor is activated. So it is activated, but for some reason we're not expressing this hot pink gene. Why? Well, maybe this particular part of the genome, let's blow it up, maybe this particular part of the genome is locked away as heterochromatin. Maybe this part of the genome is wrapped around these, these histones, so therefore this hot pink gene is, is blocked away. So therefore this hot pink transcription factor, even though it's activated, it has no access to this part of the genome. So these epigenetic modifications also determine which genes are expressed. But again, the point is, all cells in our bodies have the same genome, but which genes are expressed isn't the same. So that's what's going on when we have this original zygote, which keeps differentiating. So why, do, why are these yellow cells different from these blue cells? Because they have different transcription factors activated, and they have different epigenetics, which determine which genes they have access to, so that, that's why we have these, these different cell types. So again... Let's focus on, on, remember we talked about the skin cell and this neuron? So they're, they're, even though they both come from this particular ectodermal lineage, they're different in a very important way. These skin cells, for example, let's look at the outer layer of our skin. These skin cells right here, they keep dividing. They're, they're mitotic. They're mitotic cells because they're in mitosis and they keep dividing, forming new cells. So again, this cell goes from G0, G1 to S to G2 to mitosis. So it's, it's mitotic, it goes through the cell cycle and it keeps dividing, forming new fresh cells. However, neurons are post-mitotic. They're not doing the cell cycle. In fact, neurons go from G1 to G0 and they're stuck in the G0 phase. They just hang out in the G0 phase and they're not mitotic. They're not going through cells, the cell cycle and they're not dividing. So neurons just kind of sit around in the G0 phase, not dividing, and they kind of just accumulate damage. And it's a little more complex than that. In fact, we have stem cells that, that divide. For example, we have in certain regions, we have neuron stem cells that divide to form neuron cells, so it's a little more complex. But the point is, we have two types of cells. We have mitotic cells, which are mitotic. They are constantly dividing. Skin cells are constantly dividing in liver cells and etc. So these are mitotic. They are in the cell cycle and they keep dividing. And, and essentially we have a, a, a reservoir of stem cells. For example, in our intestines, we have a reservoir of stem cells that keep dividing to form our intestine cells. So they're mitotic. However, we also have post-mitotic cells. For example, our neurons and our muscles and adipocytes. These cell types, for example, our muscle cells are post-mitotic. They're stuck in the G0 phase and they're not dividing. They're just kind of sitting around and, and, and going through metabolism and living. And that's one reason why. What happens if we cut off our arm? We know we're not going to regrow a limb. Why? Because these, these muscle cells are post-mitotic. They're not going to keep on dividing, forming new cell types. And in reality, it's much more complex than that, but, but that's generally the idea. But the point is we have these two cell types, post-mitotic cells and mitotic cells. So now let's talk about stem cells. So again, we know this was our zygote. This one cell was able to differentiate into every single potential cell. It, it could differentiate into these cells, which could form the placenta, and it could also differentiate into these cells, which could form all the germ layers, which formed every cell in our body. So these totipotent cell stem cells are very powerful. We could take a totipotent stem cell, put it in a Petri dish, and as long as we introduced it to the right factors, it could differentiate and, and specialize into any particular cell type. We could throw it in a Petri dish, give it the right factors, and we could turn it into anything, a placenta cell or a, a neuron or, or whatever. So now, so, so these totipotents are the most powerful types of stem cells. But we also have these pluripotent stem cells, which are also sometimes called embryonic stem cells. So this inner cell mass, these cells are pluripotent stem cells. They can divide into all of these cells, which could divide into all the cells in our bodies. So they're also very powerful stem cells. However, they can't differentiate into placenta cells 
only totopotent stem cells can differentiate into placenta cells. And again, also all the other cell types. So again, if we had a pluripotent stem cell and threw it in this Petri dish, it could divide, it could differentiate. If we introduced it to the right factors, it could differentiate into any cell type in the human body, except these placenta cells and these extra embryonic structures. So these pluripotent stem cells are still very interesting and very powerful. They can differentiate into really all the important types of cells. So we also, but we also have another type. So let's look at these particular mesodermal uh, cells. So let's take these mesodermal cells, they keep dividing and maybe they kept dividing into these hematopoietic stem cells. So right now in your bones, in certain bones in the bone marrow, you have these hematopoietic stem cells. And these hematopoietic stem cells are stem cells. They can differentiate into more specialized cells and they can renew themselves and differentiate into spe different specialized cells. For example, these hematopoietic stem cells can divide into the, and can differentiate into the lymphoid lineage and differentiate into all these cell types. And they can also differentiate into this myeloid lineage, we can differentiate into all these cell types. So these hematopoietic stem cells are very powerful stem cells. They can divide essentially into all these types. We could take these hematopoietic stem cells, put it in a petri dish, and if we introduce it to the right factors, we could produce B cells. Or we could produce maybe monocytes and etc. So these hematopoietic stem cells, they would be categorized as multipotent stem cells. They're stem cells because they can differentiate into more specialized cells, and they're multipotent stem cells because they can differentiate into multiple different cell types. But again, so again, there are these layers. We have totipotent stem cells. We put in a beaker or a petri dish. It can divide into any cell type we're interested in, whether it's the placenta cells or whether it's these, the mesodermal cells, for example, our, 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 uh, these blood cells. Pluripotent stem cells can only divide into these cell types. However, however, we know it can't, these pluripotent stem cells, they're very powerful. They can divide into all these cell types and, and all, all these lineages, but they can't divide into these uh, placenta cells. Only, only the totipotent stem cells can do that. But they're still very powerful. And these, these multipotent stem cells can divide into multiple different cell types, but only these cell types. We can't take a multipotent stem cell put it in a petri dish and convert it into a neuron. It, it can't do that, it, it's multipotent. These are the only types it can di differentiate into. And then we also have unipotent, which, which are the weakest type of stem cell. So if we, so these unipotent stem cells can only differentiate into one uni, one specific cell type. So, so they're not very interesting. So again, we have these four layers, totipotent, which can divide into all cell types, including placenta and extra embryonic, pluripotent, which can differentiate into all these human uh, cell types, the multipotent stem and the hematopoietic stem cells is, is an example of multipotent stem cells, which can differentiate into multiple different cell types. But again, so again, we could take a totipotent stem cell, put it in a petri dish, and again, we know that could differentiate into maybe a pluripotent set of stem cells, which could differentiate into a multipotent set of stem cells, which could differentiate into unipotent, but we couldn't go in the reverse direction. We, we, we can't go in the reverse direction. So the point is, is there's a, there's a directionality. We can become more specialized in a more specialized type of cell, but once we become, once we go from a totipotent to pluripotent to multipotent to maybe a B cell, once we've gone very specialized into a very specific cell type, we can't go in the reverse. And in fact, it's actually a little more complex. And recently there have been studies where we can take certain cell types, for example, certain skin cell types, and, and we actually can go in the reverse direction. We, we, we can take certain cell types and, and can go in the reverse direction, but normally we can't. Because normally what happens is we have these totipotent stem cells and they go through genetic modifications like histone modifications and activation of transcription factors, which specialize them into more specialized cell types. And once they become very specialized, usually naturally in the human body, it doesn't go in the reverse direction. So again, and if you're interested in a little more details, these are more specific examples. So if we have our pluripotent stem cells, Maybe we have our pluripotent stem cells and maybe we introduce them to some of these factors. Then they will differentiate. If we give it these specific factors, it'll differentiate into these ectodermal cell lineage, this germ cell line. And if we have these ectodermal cell lines and maybe introduce it to this particular factor, then it'll differentiate into these epithelial progenitors types of cells. 
And again, maybe another example, let's say we have these pluripotent stem cells and maybe we introduce them to these factors. If we introduce a pluripotent stem cell to these factors, then it'll differentiate into this mesodermal lineage. And then once we have this mesodermal lineage, if we introduce it to these factors, then it'll differentiate into these mesenchymal stem cells. So again, these, these very non-specific, undifferentiated pluripotent stem cells can differentiate. If we give it the right factors, it can differentiate and specialize into a very specialized cell. However, once it's differentiated into a very specialized cell, normally it can't go in the reverse direction. It's stuck.